Day 294. Isaiah 62-64. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not keep still, until her righteousness shines like a bright light, her salvation like a blazing torch. Nations will see your righteousness, and all kings your glory. You will be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will bestow. You will be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord, a royal diadem in the palm of your God. No longer will you be called forsaken, nor your land named desolate, but you will be called Hephzibah, and your land Beulah, for the Lord will take delight in you, and your land will be his bride. For as a young man marries a young woman, so your sons will marry you, and as a bridegroom rejoices over his bride, so your God will rejoice over you. On your walls, O Jerusalem, I have posted watchmen, they will never be silent day or night. You who call on the Lord shall take no rest for yourselves, nor give him any rest until he establishes Jerusalem and makes her the praise of the earth. The Lord has sworn by his right hand and by his mighty arm, Never again will I give your grain to your enemies for food, nor will foreigners drink the new wine for which you have toiled. For those who harvest grain will eat it and praise the Lord, and those who gather grapes will drink the wine in my holy courts. Go out, go out through the gates, prepare the way for the people. Build it up, build up the highway, clear away the stones, raise a banner for the nations. Behold, the Lord has proclaimed to the ends of the earth, say to daughter Zion, see, your Savior comes. Look, his reward is with him, and his recompense goes before him. And they will be called the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord, and you will be called sought out, a city not forsaken. Who is this coming from Edom, from Basra with crimson stained garments? Who is this robed in splendor, marching in the greatness of his strength? It is I, proclaiming vindication, mighty to save. Why are your clothes red, and your garments like one who treads the winepress? I have trodden the winepress alone, and no one from the nations was with me. I trampled them in my anger and trod them down in my fury, their blood spattered my garments, and all my clothes were stained. For the day of vengeance was in my heart, and the year of my redemption had come. I looked, but there was no one to help, I was appalled that no one assisted. So my arm brought me salvation, and my own wrath upheld me. I trampled the nations in my anger, in my wrath I made them drunk and poured out their blood on the ground. I will make known the Lord's loving devotion and his praiseworthy acts. Because of all that the Lord has done for us, the many good things for the house of Israel according to his great compassion and loving devotion. For he said, They are surely my people, sons who will not be disloyal. So he became their savior. In all their distress, he too was afflicted, and the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and compassion he redeemed them, he lifted them up and carried them all the days of old. But they rebelled and grieved his Holy Spirit. So he turned and became their enemy, and he himself fought against them. Then his people remembered the days of old, the days of Moses. Where is he who brought them through the sea with the shepherds of his flock? Where is the one who set his Holy Spirit among them, who sent his glorious arm to lead them by the right hand of Moses, who divided the waters before them to gain for himself everlasting renown, who led them through the depths like a horse in the wilderness, so that they did not stumble? Like cattle going down to the valley, the Spirit of the Lord gave them rest. You led your people this way to make for yourself a glorious name. Look down from heaven and see, from your holy and glorious habitation. Where are your zeal and might? Your yearning and compassion for me are restrained. Yet you are our father, though Abraham does not know us and Israel does not acknowledge us. You, O Lord, are our father, our redeemer from everlasting is your name. Why, O Lord, do you make us stray from your ways and harden our hearts from fearing you? Return, for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your heritage. For a short while your people possessed your holy place, but our enemies have trampled your sanctuary. We have become like those you never ruled, like those not called by your name. If only you would rend the heavens and come down, so that mountains would quake at your presence, as fire kindles the brushwood and causes the water to boil, to make your name known to your enemies, so that the nations will tremble at your presence. When you did awesome works that we did not expect, you came down, and the mountains trembled at your presence. From ancient times no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you, who acts on behalf of those who wait for him. You welcome those who gladly do right, who remember your ways. Surely you were angry, for we sinned. How can we be saved if we remain in our sins? Each of us has become like something unclean, and all our righteous acts are like filthy rags, 
we all wither like a leaf, and our iniquities carry us away like the wind. No one calls on your name or strives to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us and delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. But now, O Lord, you are our father, we are the clay, and you are the potter, we are all the work of your hand. Do not be angry, O Lord, beyond measure, do not remember our iniquity forever. Oh, look upon us, we pray, we are all your people. Your holy cities have become a wilderness. Zion has become a wasteland and Jerusalem a desolation. Our holy and beautiful temple, where our fathers praised you, has been burned with fire, and all that was dear to us lies in ruins. After all this, O Lord, will you restrain yourself? Will you keep silent and afflict us beyond measure? 1 Timothy 1. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the command of God our Savior and of Christ Jesus our hope, to Timothy, my true child in the faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. As I urged you on my departure to Macedonia, you should stay on at Ephesus to instruct certain men not to teach false doctrines or devote themselves to myths and endless genealogies, which promote speculation rather than the stewardship of God's work, which is by faith. The goal of our instruction is the love that comes from a pure heart, a clear conscience, and a sincere faith. Some have strayed from these ways and turned aside to empty talk. They want to be teachers of the law, but they do not understand what they are saying or that which they so confidently assert. Now we know that the law is good, if one uses it legitimately. We realize that law is not enacted for the righteous, but for the lawless and rebellious, for the ungodly and sinful, for the unholy and profane, for killers of father or mother, for murderers, for the sexually immoral, for homosexuals, for slave traders and liars and perjurers and for anyone else who is averse to sound teaching that agrees with the glorious gospel of the blessed God, with which I have been entrusted. I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who has strengthened me, that he considered me faithful and appointed me to service. I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and a violent man, yet because I had acted in ignorance and unbelief, I was shown mercy. And the grace of our Lord overflowed to me, along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. This is a trustworthy saying, worthy of full acceptance, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. But for this very reason I was shown mercy, so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his perfect patience as an example to those who would believe in him for eternal life. Now to the King eternal, immortal, and invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Timothy, my child, I entrust you with this command in keeping with the previous prophecies about you, so that by them you may fight the good fight, holding on to faith and a good conscience, which some have rejected and thereby shipwrecked their faith. Among them are Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I have handed over to Satan to be taught not to blaspheme.